Hey, hello, hi. If you look at the original wall clock, you can see at first glance that it has a metal plate with leather cutouts. The whole clock also has an outer covering. All parts are attached to a mounting plate at the back. The leather cutouts are glowing with the help of LEDs, which need a grid to light up individually. For a better orientation, I assembled the clock as I understand it in a CAD program. Another advantage of modeling is that parts like the grid and the outer covering can be printed directly from a 3D printer. But how do you read the time on a wall clock? Let's take the time 718 as an example. The hour indication is represented by the word itself, here 7. The reading of the minutes consists of two parts. The first part represents the minutes in increments of 5, which is shown by a combination of two words. In addition, depending on which corner of the clock is lit, the corresponding minute is added. So you would add 3 to quarter pass. The red square represents the mounting plate with the individual LEDs behind each letter and corner. In order for the LEDs to know when to light up and in what color, they need a brain. This brain is a microcontroller. In our example, Vemos Mini D1. It's like an extremely small computer but with fewer functions. The connection consists of three cables. Two of them are responsible for the power supply and the third send the command to the LEDs. One of the challenges was attaching the steel plate. Screws could not be used for aesthetic reasons. Gluing will not be a solution either, as this would make this assembly considerably more difficult. So the choice fell on magnets. In order to find out how many magnets are needed, the weight of the plate must first be calculated. In addition, the plate must have magnetic properties. The choice fell on stainless steel 1.4016. First, you calculate the volume of the plate and then multiply it by the density. To be on the safe side, I ended up multiplying the weight by a safety factor of about 3. The magnetic design now refers to 10 kg. The typical magnet specifications always refer to the normal force. To find the shear force, the normal force must be multiplied by 0.2. Thus, our chosen magnet can hold 1.3 kg. After a little calculation, you find out that the required number of magnets is 8. The brain of the system, the small computer or microcontroller, no matter what you call the Remus Mini D1, the code works in a nutshell like this. The ASB8266 chip of the microcontroller allows us to connect to the internet through the router. This gives us access to a time server, the NTP, where the VMOS periodically asks for the time. Thus, the microcontroller always knows what time it is and can display it with LEDs. But controlling the watch with an app requires additional steps. On the one hand, the VMOS Mini D1 can set up its own server in order to be able to communicate with it via VLAN and also to be able to control it. You can command the microcontroller to change the color of the LEDs by entering a URL that looks something like this. Then, in addition to the firmware of the VMOS Mini D1, I built an app that skips this step with the URL and you can adjust the color and brightness of the watch directly from the app. For this whole system, I will make a separate video where I will go into more detail about the microcontroller firmware, app development and communication interface. Until then, have a nice day and have fun with the assembly.